of the wounds there. We'll be back in just a moment. We are going to be talking to an inventor. I love an inventor. I love someone who goes out to his shed and says, you know what, I need to work something out. I need to fix something. There's a problem and I know how to fix it. That's exactly what Peter Coleman did. He has come up with these amazing garden pellets that you actually put under your pots. I love this. You put them under your pots, right, and then you can move your pots around your garden easily with this sort of trolley. It's a great idea. Just with a, what are they called again? What are they called? Hand truck. A hand truck. I call them something else. What do I call them? Hand cart, hand trolley. Sack truck. Sack truck. That's right. That's what I call them. Thank you very much. So you move your pots around to get the sun. So we're going to be asking him in just a moment, not so much about his pots, but the journey of an inventor. What is the road that you have to travel when you have your big idea when you're in your shed to getting them in to somebody else's shed? Peter Coleman joins us in just a moment. Tell me it's miserable up there and there's nothing to catch. <laughs> Mate, it's a cracking day and the snapper are biting. You should be here. Yeah, but you know how the share market's been. Things are tight. Maybe next year. Many people approaching retirement still have too much of their super exposed to share market crashes. Future-proof your retirement with Challenger annuities for safe, reliable retirement income. Speak to your financial advisor or visit challenger.com.au. Before investing, consider your circumstances and the PDS issued by Challenger Life Company Limited on its website. Eastern Silk Mile End is making winter a whole lot warmer with great specials during the half-yearly clearance. Right now, ladies' leather gloves in the softest, genuine sheep's leather are just $20 a pair. They're so beautiful to wear. I wear, and I say that, for speak from experience, every day I pop on my gloves to push my pram to take the kids to school. On those freezing mornings, they're the best thing to keep your hands warm. Get some for yourself and also some for a gift for the friend that has everything. A beautiful pair of gloves adjust the trick. All wool stoles and scarves are reduced by a minimum of 30% and there are still plenty of great designs and colour combinations in store. The entire range of quilt cover sets has been reduced and the good news is many new colours and designs have just hit the shelf. This week's hot special, exotic brocade ottomans. These are so gorgeous. Imagine one in your bedroom. Available in two sizes, small 40 bucks and large 70. You will love the range and the prices at Eastern Silk's half yearly clearance. Eastern Silk is just two minutes from the city on James Congdon Drive at Mile End. It truly is one of Adelaide's best kept secrets. Hi, Richard Gunner here reminding you of where you can get your restaurant quality pork and hard to get produce so you can be a master chef in your own kitchen. Feast Fine Foods. At Feast, quality is everything, ensuring the very best hits your plate. So whether it's top quality Berkshire free-range pork or something a little left field, nothing is too hard to get from Feast Fine Foods. Founded by farmers, faded by foodies. Feast Fine Foods. Unley, The Parade, Central Market, Fairview Green and now Victor Harbour. Go to feastfinefoods.com.au. 5AA, the home of sport in Adelaide. Graham Corns and Stephen Rowe. Four-time Premiership coach, 65% win-loss, Cornsy, after 23 seasons. Tom Hafey. Wow. And he still does, what, 700 (laughs) push-ups and 200 sit-ups. Six Six Ks Ks and 700 crunches. Oh, I feel bad sitting here with my muffin top. (laughs) (laughs) Adelaide's number one sports show. Graham Corns and Stephen Rowe. Weekday afternoons from 4. 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. Audi Solitaire, South Australia's exclusive Audi dealer. Visit the range at Hawthorne today. Amanda Blair. Phone 8223 0000. Interactive Radio, 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. We've had a number of calls, people wanting to know the name of Patricia Summerling's book. It's The Noon Lady of Twitter. The Noon, not the Moon, the Noon Lady of Twitter. T O W R T T A. You can get that at all good bookstores by Patricia Summerling. Also, according to Deborah, we were talking before about women's sport. Uh, Deborah said that if you're single and after a good looking bloke, you've got to head to a Thunderbirds match because apparently all the good looking blokes are in Adelaide are there. Thank you for that tip, Deborah. Tick, lock that one away. Also, too, I said a bold comment. I said, well, I don't think the blokes will talk about women's sport ever. And apparently, according to one of our callers, every Wednesday night, they last season, they used to have two netballs on every Wednesday night female netballers talking about their sport. So well done, blokes world. Applause when it's granted. Well done. 
Applause to my next guest, Peter Coleman, uh, who invented these amazing garden pallets. And we met at an airport, strangely enough, and he was telling me about the garden pallets. And I said, we well, need to come on and talk to me about that because not so much about the pallets, but more the process of invention because we see it on shows such as The New Inventors. We see these amazing people up there who come from all sorts of diverse backgrounds who have just had a great idea and are starting off on the journey of getting that great idea turned from just something that's written down on a pallet or a thought bubble that you've had to a product in the shop. Peter Coleman has walked that road and he's here to tell us all about it. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thanks, Amanda. Where did you get the idea from? Well, actually, it came about by accident about five, six years ago and um, I was helping a mate of mine in a pub in Wyala and we were moving cartons of wine and he hurt his back. Um, it looked very funny at the time, but as it turned out, it was fairly serious. And then about four days later, I picked up a carton of wine and the bottom fell out of it. Uh, the carton was wet and it fell on the ground. And then how I went away and I thought about it over a period of time, and I came up with this idea of a small pallet that you put your cartons on and then you move them with a hand truck. So it keeps stuff off the ground and if ever you've tried to move a stack of cartons with a hand truck, you've got to lean them forward yeah. and whatever. And I sat on the idea for probably about six months and and I had to make up my mind, does it go to the grave with me or I do something about it? And um, I didn't know where to, st- to start. I've got a, a reasonable uh, amount of experience in accounting and marketing and I'm fairly up front. So I had a bit going for me. Um, so I decided I've got a very supportive partner and she backed me 100% and uh, I started off, I went and saw a design engineer. Uh, 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 plastic so you just had the company. idea for yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I haven't got the expertise to, to, to design it. Yeah. I had to go somewhere that somebody could take it the next step further. And I went to a company called Quality Plastics down at Wingfield and happened to s- strike up a very good rapport with the general manager. And he's a guy, and you meet lots of them that you can trust. They're yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. They don't necessarily tell you what you want to hear. And um, anyhow, um, I showed Barry and he said, yeah, we can make that. But what we need to do is to get an engineer to, to design it up. And so he, I got this engineer. Engineer went gave him the brief and sketches and everything. How'd you find else. the engineer? Was he in the phone book? Or? Well, no. Barry uh, recommended him to me, and he'd done a fair bit of work for Barry, uh, so he was a very good start. But after five six weeks, he came back after having I'd given him all the information, and what he designed was nothing like I wanted, <laughs> nothing at all. And I hit the roof, <laughs> yeah. spat the dummy, and um, three days later he came back with exactly what I wanted. And so then I had to make the decision, do I spend $40,000 on the tooling to get it done? Uh, because you don't know, in theory it works, but until you get the, the tooling made, you've got no idea. So I went ahead with the tooling and, you know, wondered about, worried about where I'd get the $40,000 for three months. And then uh, when it was finished, uh, they did the prototypes. The engineer phoned me up and said, you better come down and have a look at this. And I went down, and, and the tone of his voice, I didn't like it at all. You know, this yeah. you could almost kiss 40 grand goodbye. Anyway, I got down there, and the product that they'd produced from the drawings was perfect. We've never changed it from day wow. one. I was just so excited, I nearly burst into tears. It was just one of these wonderful things. I went home, and, and then from there on, it just started. Where do we go from here? And so where did you go from there? I mean, obviously, you just said $40,000. Is that what it cost you to set it all up? That was only the tooling. Um, God. Well, when we designed it, we we had in mind that we'd sell to the hotels. And so I went around and saw all the big hotels, and we got nowhere. Um, and I couldn't work out why. So I, I got in touch with one of the managing directors of one of the big pubs, and I went and showed him, and I said, what do you think of this? He said, oh, it's wonderful. And he said, it's a good, very good product. And I said very politely, why don't you take a couple hundred? And he said, well, yeah. we've, <laughs> we, we've, we've got guys out there sitting in the bottle department that do nothing for three hours a day. Why should we pay to buy two or three hundred, they're only cheap, they're not expensive, but why should we pay for somebody that's doing nothing? And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, what about back accidents? And uh, he said, well, we haven't had any. And I thought to myself, you will. And I, I thought, we're just wasting my time. So we advertised in a couple of pub magazines. It was very interesting. You, you learn a lot from different experiences. You go down a lot of wrong roads and the gate's shut. Yeah. You come back and you start again. And anyhow, we did some advertising in different pubs and we found that a lot of the country pubs were buying them where the big pubs weren't. And we couldn't work out why. And I phoned one of the oh, guys. I know why. Well, <laughs> 
Because I reckon that the owner operators in the e- country exactly yeah, that yeah. You, you got it in one and family and yeah. sons yeah. and son in laws and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So you care for yeah. them more. Yeah, yeah. well, you, that's dead right. But we yeah. had to learn that pretty well the hard way, and um, and then I. Well, I decided, that I thought that the wineries would be a good place to start. So I went down and saw the wineries down at McLaren Vale one day. They have a, a big get together and they swap wine stories and glasses of wine and ports and whatever thing. And I showed them and, and everybody said, that's fantastic. And a guy from Australia Post came up to me and he said, look, this is marvellous. If you can get them into the wineries and I'll help you. He's the cour- he was a carrier or the courier for Australia Post to pick up the wines. Ah. And so with in help with him, we got them into the wineries in McLaren Vale and they'd been in there a week and I suppose we're in about 20-odd wineries and I phoned him up and I said, how did you go? And he said, you've got no idea. I have this week lifted 25 tonne less than I normally would because when he went in to get the wines, they were all on pallets. He slid the hand truck underneath and wheeled them off uh, and it was simple as that. From there on, Australia Post took it up in in uh, Victoria. They're occupational health and safety people. How fabulous! And then we shifted the emphasis from um, quick um, and easy movement to safety concerns. And we found out that there's fifty thousand back accidents a year in Australia, reported back accidents. And most of the, those accidents, if they are through bad lifting practices, and if they use pallets and stack the cartons on those. The pallets, incidentally, are about the same size as a carton of beer, Mm-mm. and they can then use them. Pass me that one there, because they're really strong, aren't they? I mean, what's the and you know, and you've really got to see that. Have you got a website? Oh yeah, yeah. www. To see what I'm talking about, www.gardenpallets.com.au. Pallets, P-A, not P-E, P-A, double L-E-T-S. How? much do they hold? Like what's the weight that the pallets will hold? Well what you've got in your hand there's a garden pallet for pot plants um, and they'll take 180 kilos. Now that's a pretty big pot plant. Even if you don't want to move it, um, what that pallet does, it keeps pots off the ground so you can hose underneath. Uh, It air trims, if the roots come through it air trims so they don't the roots don't go into the ground. Keeps bugs away. It It don't get in the pots. And if you've got a problem with say snails or whatever, you can put poison in in a little saucer, slide it underneath. under there, dogs can't get it or whatever. And it also keeps it cool in the summertime. It doesn't, the pots don't take the heat from the pots. But just looking at, you know, people that drag pots around, I mean, the idea for this is a great one that, and for nurseries and everything, my God, this would be absolutely amazing. That was my first part-time job was working in a nursery as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we used to have to drag pots out of the nursery. Mm. But, you know, if you've got pots and you want to move them around your garden and you want to make sure that you capture the winter sun and all those sorts of things, this is perfect, isn't it? Because you have yeah. all your pots off the ground on the pallet, these little individual pallets, and you just yep. put your sack truck underneath it and away so, you go. So a lot of divorces. Well, it just save your back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really would. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Are you going to make them for any other things, or is it just the cardboard or the boxes and the garden? Pallets? Well, they can. You can use them for for almost anything. That oblong one, mm. uh, they're used in hospitals and uh, uh, foundries, um, chemist shops, lawyers for carting their paper. The paper comes in, goes straight on onto the pallets, and then a young girl, and normally it's the young girls that have to move them, yeah. can slide a hand truck under that and move 180 kilos of, of goods easily. Um, we we probably won't go any further. We've got Gosh. the right two right products, the, the round one and the, the oblong one, and we probably won't take it any further. I can't see anything that we could invent that would support or supplement Have you been this. on the new inventors or anything? No, I tried to get on. They uh, For some reason, they don't they didn't like the product. They said the pallets have been around for years and years and years. And I, I said to them, no, they haven't um, because, you know, we've design Not registered like all around the world. Um, so if they'd have been around and mm. were common, we, we couldn't have done that. So they wouldn't put me on. Roy wants to talk to you. Uh, pop your headphones on there. Hi, Roy. Oh, hang on. Hang on, Roy. How are you? Good. Thank you, Amanda. Hi, Good Roy. Good Peter. Hi, Roy. How are you? Good, thank you. You recognise the voice? I do. (laughs) (laughs) I've been using Peter's pallets many years ago for shifting paper around, Peter. Do you remember? I do. And uh, that saved my back. Believe me, it's one of the best products ever invented for the area. So shifting paper? Yeah, boxes of paper. Right, okay. 
the A4 sheets and the A3 sheets and so forth. Yeah, I think they're just amazing. I mean, just to be able to shift stuff around easily because I've got a heap of um, boxes in my shed and I, it, it, they get wet, don't yeah. they? That's why with the wine boxes, yeah. even when they're sitting on concrete, they just get wet. The, you know, you you don't even have a, a you know a wet surface, but they seem to absorb moisture from the concrete slab yeah, they and do. they fall apart. Yep. All yep. my preserving jars and everything are all in, are all in, and I've got chutneys and stuff that I'm storing out in the shed yeah. in cardboard boxes, and I'll be whacking a pallet underneath them. Is it hard? I mean, were you, you know, obviously you were of the age and of the um, financial position, I suppose, that you could take your idea forward. Are there sufficient grants and stuff for people? I mean, is it a, is it a hard thing? It's it's extremely hard. Um, you know, uh, the government tends to say that there's lots of um, subsidies around to, to support inventors, but there's not. Um, there's schemes that you spend $20,000 on what they nominate uh, in training and whatever, and you'll get 10000 back. To spend $20,000 on one particular area is almost impossible. You don't get a lot of support, um, either from the state or the Commonwealth government. Forget what you read in the papers and yeah. how much goes to industry. If you're a General Motors or uh, Hardy's Wines or Caroma Industries, there's money there. For small guys, you don't. Um, I spoke at a, a, an inventors club some time ago and I went along and I thought, I can show the product in 10 seconds or, or one minute. What else can I talk about? And I was meant to speak for 15 minutes. And I went along and I showed them the product and then I spoke about where I'd come from, the problems that I had and, and so on and so on. An hour later, I was still there asking, answering questions where people didn't know where to go, what to do and whatever. And as a very good example, a guy there had the most ingenious thing I've ever seen in my life. It cost about $10 and it was for putting in, in dripper hoses. You know how you've got to put the those little um, connections in and then you put another hose onto the big hose, you've got to push a, a, a nail or something yeah, in yeah. a punch hole. This thing you could do in two seconds and not ruin your fingers. It was a marvellous invention. I've never, ever seen that get any further and it probably won't. The, the, the guy had no one to help him and he didn't have the push and no contacts and, and he'd obviously given up. And it's a real shame if I would love, one day I'm going to win an award <laughs> and when I go to get up on, on stage to to have the the, the the speech, I'm going to. Exp I'd love to explain to the governments, both sides and federally, we must do more for the small inventors. Absolutely, we might take some calls from you, small inventors, right now. Eight double two three double o double o. I mean, if you have got a shed, oh, I just turned myself off. If you've got a shed, if you've got a room of one's own, and you go into it and you invent things and you've got some great ideas but you just don't know how to do it or you don't have the money to do it or you're frustrated by the lack of help, uh, give us a ring, 8223 0000. I would love to hear from you, particularly if you've got a great invention, 8223 0000. I am with Peter Coolman. He is from gardenpellets.com.au. Give us a ring, inventors. We'll be back in just a moment. I love a hot shower in the morning. The buying a new unit. So confusing. I mean, panels are popular, but the sun isn't shining when I get up. Electricity costs are rising, and who wants a big, messy tank that heats water you don't need? The answer is natural gas. Temperature controlled, works perfect day or night, and natural gas never runs out. Change from electric to gas hot water from $1,290. Conditions apply. Ask your plumber, visit maketheconnection.com.au or call 1300 001 001. Natural gas. Make the connection. It's all happening at the Adelaide Showground. This weekend, don't miss the Swimming Pool and Spa Show, a comprehensive range of products and technology from all the major pool and spa manufacturers. Adelaide Showground, Adelaide's home of events and exhibitions. AEC.com.au Hi, Richard Gunner here reminding you of where you can get your restaurant quality produce so that you can be a master chef in your own kitchen. Feast Fine Foods. We have been supplying some of the best restaurants across Australia for up to 10 years and chefs such as Neil Perry, Peter Gilmore, Chong Lu and Simon Bryant continue to choose Feast when preparing their fabulous meals. Founded by farmers, fated by foodies, Feast Fine Foods, Unley, The Parade, Central Market, Fairview Green and now Victor Harbour. Go to feastfinefoods.com.au Live, if this plant gets off the ground, it'll be one of the biggest mines in the world. One day I'll go, but I'm not going now. You're in the poor house and the government's running a madhouse. Local, your club is on its knees. Making decisions for the nation in Adelaide. This is a major issue for the government. And guess what? The minister's not available. And interactive 24-7. 
Gee, I tell you what, I hope you're around for a bloody long time, Leon. You do a fantastic job. If your two boys weren't playing for Ford Power, you would tear strips off that club. Interactive Radio, 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Checking 5AA headlines, I'm Matthew Pantelis. Port CEO Mark Hazeman's announced his resignation after three years with the club. He says it's his call but will stay until a success is found. He'll be on the sports show after the 5 o'clock news. Qantas has resumed flights to New Zealand after the volcanic ash cloud finally cleared. Flights have been grounded all week for safety reasons. And the sexual abuse case against the former head of the IMF may not proceed in New York because of credibility issues with his accuser. In more sports the Crows hoping to turn around their form. Six changes in a wet night game against Sydney at Amy tomorrow night. Showers turning to rain tomorrow, 16 after an overnight low of 13 tonight. Right now, 21 lovely degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. Interactive Radio, 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Phone 8223 0000. Amanda Blair. Chatting away to Peter Pullman, who's come up with a big idea. And his big idea is now, after a lot of toil and a lot of hard work in Bunnings stores, which is great, and other hardware stores, uh, I would imagine, no, just Bunnings. Yes. Yes, or online. Uh, and, you know, it's how long has it been from idea to... Um, I originally now. I originally invented the the mini pallet, which is the oblong one, about five six years ago. Yeah. And then we um, the next spin off was the the garden pallet, the round one, and that's been on the market about six months. And that if we'd invented that one first, people relate to that; they can see what it does. Does yeah. Um, and then bought the oblong one after that. We we probably would have been years ahead. But it would be good for things like um, moving houses as well. You know, like like anything, moving books, bookstores, like anything that you have got to move boxes around and you can't trust the bottom of those boxes, just to have a pallet would be perfect. Well, we've got them in a lot of libraries and schools um, and the idea is when the product comes in from a production line or off a truck, goes straight on a pallet, pallet, anybody can move it from there on. Yeah, Yeah, it's great. It's just such a hard thing. I've got a friend in Melbourne, Jay, who has always got these good ideas. You know, he, he's just the sort of guy that he sits there and he goes, right, I could think of, you know, like, oh, imagine if I could fix that or I, w- I would love to invent something. And he's always, he he never gets it off the ground because he just finds it so hard, you know, that, that mm. road to, to travel down. He's just like, well, how am I going to do it? If I wasn't involved in another company, uh, we run a, a print finishing company, if I didn't get an income from that and, and I could not rely on this to get it where it is, one day there'll be a, somebody's going to make a huge amount of money out of it. It's probably going to be my kids. Uh, but it, it, it is a, a, a really top product. We've just sent some to the United Kingdom. We've got them on trial in the United States. And it will happen. There's no question that. It's the timing. It's just a long road. Yeah. Paul's on the line. He's an inventor. Hi, Paul. Hi, how are you doing? What did you invent? Well, uh, we developed, uh, well, I, I invented a product called Protective Column Guards. They're uh, uh, designed for uh, warehouses, and basically what they do is they protect warehouse racking from forklift impacts. Um, we did that about seven years ago, and, and now we sell, they're made in Adelaide, and we sell in over 60 countries. Yay! So what gave you the idea for that, Paul? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear from, said, from the applause. Sorry, I said, what gave you the idea for that? Well, uh, quite simply, listening to people. Um, I was walking through a warehouse and the guy that owned the warehouse was complaining about how his racking was being damaged from fork trucks. And uh, I thought about it for a few years and and we uh, ultimately we put a business case together, uh, me and a couple of other shareholders, and, and uh, we went ahead and did it. And, and what I, background were you from? My background is design and product development, so okay. I'm a professional uh, product developer. But but I do mentor um, inventors, and and one thing, uh, a number of things I often advise them is num- number one, um, if you can't afford to spend the money, don't do it. Um, num- number two, make sure you do a, an extensive amount of research. Uh, before you uh, proceed down that path because it can become very expensive. And number three, um, don't suffer from a a symptom, uh, uh, from a problem that I call premature evaluation. Um, (laughs) Often inventors, uh, you know, have have these ideas and they really think it's the best thing that that, uh, since sliced bread.
bread, and that's often not the case. And a simple um, a simple Google search will generally find the same product. So uh, you know, I'd say two in every hundred products would would succeed. Mm, and you've just but, got to be persistent, I'd imagine, too. A lot of hard work, persistence, and and um, don't don't rely on your own skills to uh, to uh, deliver the product to the marketplace. It's really important to recognise that uh, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and then bring in help to uh, assist you with those those weak areas. And I think Pete is a good example of that. You know, someone who doesn't come from a design background but had the good idea and went and found the plastic moulding company, and then found yeah. the engineer and you know, got all the right people to do it. Yeah, the important thing is that it, it's uh, you know all of that skill is available in South Australia, and uh, um, un- unfortunately, and, and for valid reasons, governments uh, have very limited ability to assist inventors these days because time times are so tough and mm. and they're under such financial constraints. So that, that's why I said in the early stages, if you can't afford to spend and lose that money yourself, don't even think about doing it. Yeah, good on you, Paul. Thank you so much for your call. Good luck with those future inventions. It's interesting, remember that woman, uh, Peter, who uh, had kids, had, she had boys that played cricket and she invented, I think she was on the, the new inventors at one point, she invented that cricket mat where she actually taught the kids how to place their feet, the correct feet placement in front of the wickets and she ended up making an absolute mozza and that became like official cricket merchandise mm. and all that sort of stuff and just a simple idea from a mum who just was trying to get her kids to play cricket better. I mean, sometimes I'd imagine the best inventions are the simple ones. Well, they are. It's, it's the timing that to, um, to get them onto the market. I know the product that Paul's talking about, and I agree with every comment that he made. Um, evaluation on, on marketing research, they're the things that you probably should know before you start, yeah. and you should do, but... When you start off in, in inventing a, or trying to get a new product on the market, there's a lot of these things you overlook. And the, the, the finance that he talked about, that's very important. You've got to have a product that is good mm. and you've got to make sure that you know when to stop. There was a product on uh, um, New Inventors a little while ago, a shade for a, a car, and uh, the guy had spent something like three or $400,000 on it. It is never, ever going to work. He is going to blow 400 grand for sure. Wow. Um, I always had in the back of my mind that if I ever, if I couldn't take this any further, I'd never spend enough money on it or too much money that I couldn't go to a major corporation and say, here, just cover the debt that I've got and you can have it. Uh, we're a long way away from that because I, I believe this product one day is worth millions and millions and millions. Jeez, do you need yeah. a new best friend or something <laughs> for me to buy in? <laughs> no, but it is these simple ideas, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the the most frustrating part, and I think, and Paul didn't mention this, is the timing. You've got to rely on, and, and he did say that, you've got to get expertise from other people and you've got to rely on people. Yeah. And if you go back to when that tool was designed, the guy wasted five weeks of in designing and then came, come back. The tooling then to be made was three months. The trial, it was another two weeks. Um, and then to go and see the, the pubs and do the research on the big pubs that didn't work, that's another couple of weeks and yeah. so on and so on it's and so time, on. It's time, isn't it? It's yeah. not going to happen overnight. No. Tanya's on the line. Now, Tanya approached me, and you've just reminded me, Tanya, that I haven't got back to you. I'm sorry about that. Tanya, Hi, Amanda. Tanya pounced on me like all good inventors did. She seized an opportunity <laughs> at the Oak Bank races and said, you I need did. to know about my invention. So <laughs> what what is it exactly, Tanya? Well, we saw a need in the market for um, a criminal marking system. So essentially what we do is provide a forensic evidence at a crime scene between criminal and the, the place that it occurred. So that, that's in a very quick format and we've got numbers of a, a, a range of different products in our, um, uh, in our, our product portfolio. Um, so we can provide systems for businesses, for homes, for cars, personal products. But uh, the, the time taken to develop all this stuff and bring it to market has been far in excess of anything that we had ever anticipated when we first began this journey. And what background were you from? Um, for me, I was from a sort of a sales marketing uh, background, but my husband's an electrical engineer, so he's the one that's actually designed the, uh, the product itself. And so what gave you the idea, though? I mean... 
You know, uh, in, in Peter's case, it was a, a mate who hurt his back. What was it with yours? Because that's kind well, of, was it watching CSI or what was it? <laughs> a little bit like that. Um, these types of products have been around overseas uh, for about 15 years and, and worked incredibly well to actually reduce crime rates, not necessarily catching criminals, but reducing the, um, the crime that occurs. Um, so we had a look at those products and we just found that they weren't suitable to the Australian marketplace. Mm. Uh, to our businesses are designed differently. You know, we have wider doorways and higher ceilings and all sorts of things like that. So um, that's really where our journey started was to come up with uh, and design a product that was suitable for the Australian marketplace. And, you know, Australia suffers as badly from armed hold-up and criminal activity as what any other country does. And it was... Um, uh, I guess a niche market in the security industry that just wasn't being addressed. And have so you have you had success with that, or are you finding it difficult? Um, introducing a new product into a, a, a an existing category is always a difficult situation. But yes, we are um, we are succeeding with it slowly but surely. We have um, oh, about over 200 systems out there. We've got distributors throughout Australia. But again, it's been a very very slow process. Um, and unfortunately there's not as much financial support from the, the federal or, or state governments as, uh, as what we'd like to see. But I would like to um, sort of put out there to those people who are wondering where they can get advice and, and so forth, we've had a lot of um, free assistance from um, a sort of a quasi-government department called Innovate SA, and they're amazing guys there, and, and you can call them up and they run all sorts of programs for um, entrepreneurs yeah. um, and provide free guidance and free assistance, and they are sort of backed by the state government. So Innovate SA. Innovate SA, they're just amazing. And they, they run a whole lot of different programs that people can sort of get into um, and run about five or six different courses that could sort of cover a wide gambit of of different um, sort of things that you have to think about when you're looking to begin a business or, um, you know, design a new product or whatever. But, but they are completely free and certainly a wonderful place to start. And Tanya, what's the name of your... You might as well, you know, seize another opportunity and get a free <laughs> plug-in. What's the name of your business? Okay, we are DNA Security Solutions and our product is called DNA Guardian and that's the business products that we offer to places like pubs and clubs, um, jewellers, post offices, um, you know, any business essentially that is, falls victim uh, to armed hold-up and that sort of thing, service stations. Wow. Right. And if they just Google DNA Security Solutions, they'll find you? Yes, dnasecuritysolutions.com.au. Perfect. All right, Tanya, lovely, lovely to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And Innovate SA, well, that's certainly something to tuck away. Peter, it's been great talking to you and I honestly, I've just felt like I was, you know, one of the judges then on, uh, on you know, What's it called? The new inventors. No, I think this is a great product and good on you for being so dogged, you know, with a good idea because so many people don't do it. You know, they have the idea but they never follow through. So I think it's wonderful that you have. Thanks, Amanda. And you're saving so many backs. Good on you. And good luck. If I can say one thing, if anybody's out there that wants to have a chat over a cup of coffee and uh, find out where I've been and and if I can save anybody some time and some money, uh, just go to the webpage and send me an email and a phone number and I'll give them a ring back and have a chat. Good on you. So the website is www.gardenpalettes.com.au. Fantastic. Peter Coleman, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back in just a moment. Oh, I need some parents, or maybe just one, to play our game. I'm about to give away on a Friday afternoon a family pass to go and see Cars 2, thanks to the Wallace Cinema. Give us a ring, 8223 00.